Thank you very much. So my talk title this morning is Regime Shifts in R and Data Science Within the BC Public Service, Observations from the Field. And I thought I would start by introducing the BC Public Service. The Public Service is the professional organization that supports the elected government of the province of British Columbia, Canada. It includes over 35,000 employees based from offices and of course, more, more recently from homes all over the province, including myself calling in from the capital of our province, Victoria, British Columbia, denoted on the map by a geo point. And also if you ever visited where you would find our government's parliament buildings seen on the photo in this slide. <clears throat> Employees um, can be, um, are divided among 20 ministries ranging from natural sector ministries like our Ministry of Environment, social ministries like our Ministries of Poverty, Poverty Reduction, our Ministry of Finance, and many more. And there are many, many data roles in the BC Public Service. Creating data, data administration, sharing data, operational data analyses, research, and beyond. There are probably as many tools and different data workflows as there are roles. However, unsurprisingly, there is a high frequency of the use of Microsoft-based tools like Excel or Microsoft Access or Esri tools for geospatial um, with being used within the BC Public Service. So I've had a few data roles in the BC Public Service so far. I actually started my career as a bird biologist Hence, uh, my Twitter and GitHub Black Oyster Catcher Shorebird avatar. Then I became a research scientist. And then I joined the BC Public Service as a conservation specialist. In 2011, I joined the environmental reporting team in the Ministry of Environment as a team lead. And that's where my own journey with learning the R programming language began. And this talk, and it's actually only recently that I moved into a dedicated data science role. So my talk is based on my own observations from these roles, from my personal experience learning R while working for the BC Public Service, and that of some of my colleagues um, as we participated in a community shifting to R from other tools. So unfortunately, I don't have a tidy data frame with the number of R users in the BC Public Service over time. I really wish that I did. But what I do have is qualitative information in the use of R in the BC Public Service and the R ecosystem, sorry, over time. And I've presented this here as sort of landmarks over the last 10 years. So let's unpack this timeline a little bit. Before the chart starts, so pre-2012, there were, of course, a number of public servants using R for their workflows, usually for one step, like a statistical test, or a gnarly data transformation that you just couldn't do with a, another tool. This would have included analysts, economists, or our subject matter, subject matter experts. But in 2012 and 2013, we really saw a shift where a few teams started to move entire program workflows from those Microsoft tools to R-based workflows. In particular, leaders in this space were, was our BC statistical agency, known as BC Stats, as well as our environmental reporting unit in our Ministry of Environment. And the business case, of course, for taking the time uh, to learn and change these workflows were to leverage the reproducibility and longer term efficiencies um, of a programming approach. A couple of years later, we started to see the use of R Markdown, um, first for automated reports like PDFs or Excel sheets, and as well for some static HTML things that started to uh, appear on our BC government uh, public facing web page. By 2017, we had our first government R package published to CRAN, Tidy HIDAT, and BC Maps, uh, I think almost at the same time, followed by our first BC government Shiny app um, published to production for public consumption. Following that, we, the government started to leverage the shinyapps.io platform for publishing. In 2019, we launched an official data science community of practice, which I'll talk about a little bit later. And today we have over 50 Shiny apps and R packages in use in the BC Public Service. So how did we get from a handful of individual users using R in 2012 to it really being a go-to tool and approach for 
data programs uh, in some ministries and teams across the government of British Columbia. I've actually been thinking about this journey quite a bit. And maybe it's because I started my career as a biologist or because our communities always refer to R and the R ecosystem. I've been thinking about this as a sort of a, gr a this growth as a type of regime shift in the BC Public Service. So what is a regime shift? Regime shifts is really a fancy name for how some large natural systems change over time. They, a regime shift is really a large change in the structure and function of a system. And they typically happen either with a smooth internal change in a process or an external dis deter disturbance triggering a large change. So one well-known example of a regime shift in the natural uh, world in our Cascadia region is that of sea otters and kelp forest beds, where with the removal of sea otters, pretty large disturbance in the 1800s from fur trade, we saw an increase in their um, prey, those spiny purple urchins, who then uh, started to forage and decrease our important coastal kelp forests. So with, but with the reintroduction and support of the regrowth, slow support of the regrowth of sea otter populations, we are now seeing these ecosystems shift back once again. So obviously the BC Public Service is not staffed with sea otters. However, I do think that the drivers uh, supporting the shift to R and other more reproducible data tools in the BC Public Service are similar in many ways to these kind of natural ecosystem changes. So my first observation is that the growth of R in the BC Public Service was initially supported by a slow internal change that is ongoing today around building a learning community this is a picture of our first internal uh, learning workshop introducing staff to R in 2014. Learning communities already existed in the BC Public Service, centered around many, many topics. However, this was the beginning of a coming together around learn programming for data analysis. And we have been able to offer about one to two workshops a year since this initial offering and face-to-face -face and more recently online workshops have been at the center of supporting public servants to learn R and other data science tools. Our early workshops and our approach still today are heavily inspired by both the Carpentries and the R OpenSci organizations. The Carpentries boot camp style um, was the launching pad for my own personal journey, improving my computing skills for science. And I know for many of my colleagues that the R OpenSci community and their events provided that same opportunity for, for launching their R developer skills. Both organizations focus on inclusive, safe spaces and openness, and we were able to leverage some of their approaches and benefit from participating and learning from their com community building experiences. For example, the adoption um, and enforcement of a code of conduct, as well as techniques to ensure participants feel welcomed and supported and prepared um, for their learning have been key approaches and both tools that we learned from the community approach and the community manager of our OpenSci. And I really believe that this, this has been fundamental in helping uh, BC public servants grow the use of R. In 2015, However, we also saw what could only be described as an external disturbance, something that dramatically changed the data science ecosystem for the BC Public Service. BC government established an organization on the code hosting platform, GitHub. Here's the earliest screenshot that I have, or I could find, where we had eight members of the organization and a handful of repositories. Now, BCGov GitHub was actually initially established as a part of an approach to better collaborate with BC's technology sector. However, it also created um, a space for supporting the use and growth of R. And in fact, a little bit of a secret is that the very first repository in BCGov GitHub was R code. So three things that I think the tool helped with the growth of R. One was around open learning content. Those folks in the BC Public Service who are ahead of others in their learning journey were able to share content in a scalable way. I'm not sure what it is like in other organizations. However, sometimes just getting your tools up and running can be the biggest barrier to data science learning. 
So BC Gov GitHub really helped with this. And really today, one of our most popular resources is still our page on how to get set up with R and R Studio on a BC public service managed machine. However, we have a lot of other content to help learners as well. Helping also became easier. While nothing replaces sitting with a colleague, troubleshooting some code, or learning from each other, even on Zoom, in my opinion anyways, BCGov GitHub did provide an easy way to share a reproducible example and get feedback from colleagues. And, in, and what was amazing was you could get feedback from colleagues anywhere in the province. So here is a gist of my own from GitHub that I found from a few years ago, aptly named helpme.r, where I was struggling with some row-wise workflows, something that I actually still struggle with every time I go to do it. But being able to share with colleagues in different buildings or cities um, across the province really means quick feedback um, and a faster learning journey. And of course, the best part of it is that the solution is still there for Steph Hazlitt in six months when I forget that solution or when a colleague uh, hits the same um, struggle, you know, at any time in the future. And finally, BC Dev GitHub really just had the sheer benefit of allowing us to be open. Opening up code, in my opinion, is one of the um, one of a, an amazing driver for um, seeing an increase in the rate of learning and use of any programming language. First, the, the basic is cutting and pasting. There's nothing more powerful or superpower feeling about being able to cut and paste a piece of code and having it work on your machine, even when you don't really know what it does. But then you can take the time to dig in, um, and it re it's a real motivator. And I still cut and paste my own code out of repositories when I start a new project, just because I know that it works. We saw that this eventually led to collaborations among team members, really starting to co-write code together for projects. And then later contributions among teams or ministries across the project, the uh, province, sorry. And more recently, we've been exploring open code reviews. When these are done with kindness and consideration, they can be a very powerful tool, tool for helping people learn and improve their uh, code for data science. So while I didn't have any tabular data on the number of R users, we can have a look inside BCGov GitHub for the number of R users using GitHub. And so what I have here um, is the growth in the use of R and GitHub uh, looking at repositories. So we've got time on the x-axis over the years since that initial 2015 and the cumulative number of BCGov GitHub repositories by top language used. And what we can see is, like I said earlier, the R users were out the gate first in 2015 with the first repo. But we have seen a strong and consistent increase in the use of R, at least with this window looking through our GitHub repositories. And it is still one of the most commonly used uh, programming languages uh, in the BC Public Service in GitHub. So where are we today? So as I said before, our current state is uh, what I feel is an amazing open source uh, community. We have over 20 R packages in BCGov GitHub. Many of them are really used by individuals or small teams or medium and large teams, maybe a utility package that's really specific to a single program. However, today we have, I believe, five R packages published to CRAN uh, available for um, community use. We also have over 20 Shiny apps uh, in production. And I have two examples here, one from our uh, environmental reporting team uh, on uh, looking at municipal solid waste and another from our BC stats team looking at economic recovery indicators. And as I said, when those uh, shiny apps are built using open code and open license data, um, they're now hosted on shinyapps.io. In 2019, we were able to launch an official data science community of practice. And by official, I really mean that we made a sticker and, and gave everybody stickers. Um, but what was exciting about that, um, th that event was being able to start to pull the different programming communities for data science together under one umbrella. Um, and so we uh, really, because we've also seen not just the growth of R and the R ecosystem, however, of course, also the growth of Python um, and lots of people um, trying to, beginning their learning journeys for, with Git and using a code sharing platform like GitHub. 
In terms of our R community, with over 35,000 public servants and lots of recruitment of new early career uh, data analysts and data scientists, we still spend a, a large proportion of our focus is still on uh, workshops for getting started, supporting people on their early learning journey. But we also have teams who are now intermediate or really expert R um, analysts as well as developers. And we've seen those teams start to um, deliver webinars and workshops on specific topics like geospatial, big data, reproducible workflows. And my own team has been focusing a fair bit on how to bridge workflows. And by bridging workflows, I mean when you have uh, a team that's using Python and R, maybe base R and tidyverse R, um, or importantly, data science teams who are working with either other data teams or policy teams, and how can we leverage our tools but interface with those Microsoft Office tools. And here's a poster from our last um, workshop uh, through the community of practice where we were talking about leveraging our markdown to produce reproducible PowerPoint slides. So my biggest observation around the growth of R in the BC Public Service is that it is really all about the people. People are doing the learning and are at the heart of the community. And so finding and contributing to or building safe, accessible communities, I believe has been one of the most important aspects of the growth of R in, in the public service and beyond. Here are just a few logos from other communities doing a tremendous amount for supporting people learning R and data science. A key to growing R within the public service itself, a reasonably large organization with diverse users and workflows, I believe has been due to moving at the speed of trust. This was a phrase that I learned from Hani Delacaney, who's a federal Canadian public servant a couple of years ago that really resonated with me. At the heart of changing tools and approaches, whether it is for yourself or a team member new to working in the open or an organization changing tools and approaches is about building trust. And trust or building trust takes time. And in our case, it has been an almost 10 year journey, um, which I believe is still ongoing today. So honestly, I'm not sure if regime shifts is really a useful mental model for examining the growth of our users. But moving forward, I do think regime shifts and the growth of our data science skills have some other things in common. They're both non-linear. Whether it is your own learning plan, supporting a team or your organization, shifts are really rarely linear. So allow yourself to have fast and slow rates and times of learning and rests along the way, super important for the long-term journey. Um, many stable states. In the natural world, there are often many stable states, and I believe the same can be said for R and data science. If one project is using base R, another tidyverse, or another one Python, and they're working for you or your team or your organization, then those many stable states are uh, okay and expected. And finally, they're expected to increase. Shifts in the natural world are expected to increase with a changing climate, and I believe the same can be said for data science and R. I believe the things in the BC Public Service will again look very different in another 10 years time. So I'd like to acknowledge my many BC government and BC Public Service colleagues and community members whose hard work and learning journey made this talk possible. And also I really hope that no ecological theories were harmed in the making of my talk, if there are regime shift experts out there in the audience. And in case regime shifts don't take off as an infectious idea for thinking about the growth and use of R, I'll leave everyone with what might be the most infectious idea to emerge from British Columbia, Canada this past year, in my opinion, a quote from our lead public health officer, Dr. Bonnie Henry, be kind, be calm and be safe. Thank you for listening and enjoy the rest of today's amazing lineup of Cascadia R conferences. You can find me at Steph Hazlitt on Twitter and GitHub and my uh, talk slides are available in github.com forward slash Steph Hazlitt. Thank you. Thanks, Stephanie. We do have one question. Well, we have time for one question. There's, there's a few, but <laughs> there's one that got a few votes. So the question is, this is exactly where we are at Oregon Health Authority, building a learning community. What recommendations can you offer to government and agents in these earlier stages of building a community of practice in government? Um, 
I think, you know, I think that I, that's a great question. It's amazing. And this talk has been an amazing time for me to reflect. Um, I feel like, you know, deciding on those early principles of what you want that community, that community to, to sort of live by, um, which is why we were so grateful for uh, learning from other communities who had who were out in front of us. And so uh, safety and um, accessibility um, and some sort of an equity if you have in your organizations, you know, it's hard. It's not it's, there's not equity around ability, people's ability to participate because of different roles in your organization can be a big one. Um, so I think collaboratively agreeing and having those principles sort of forward facing as the community builds, I think is really important and powerful. Um, and then just take it slow. Uh, building community takes time, especially, you know, building the community that you want. So managing the expectations for your own team, pacing yourself so that you don't see burnout. Um, I think within organizations, a lot of this work is done. I don't want to say off the side of your desk, because I, I do believe we've been well supported by our leadership. Um, but let's acknowledge that we all have other things that we have to do within those roles as well. So just pacing yourself and, um, and managing expectations and bringing your leadership along, I think is very important um, in, in that in the same, because they are a part of the community um, and can really um, help boost and, and provide those resources when, when they're needed. Very well said. Thanks so much, Stephanie. Thank you, everybody. If you can see the chat, Everyone loved your talk. Thank, Thank you. you so much for joining us today. And right now we have about a five minute break. So go grab your coffee, a snack, whatever you need. We'll see you back here in five minutes. <laughs>